What's going on internet and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel where we ride the waves of fact and fiction to a spectacularly speculative conclusion. I'm glad you've been digging the latest videos and if you find this one to your liking, make sure to hit that thumbs up and share the video with your friends and enemies because it's important to maintain a balanced information diet. My name's Jack Finch and today I'll be your host as we ask the question, what if Mexico becomes a superpower? Now, we're not going to lie, as usual, there's a lot to unpack in this video, the majority of which has some real, tangible, possible outcomes that may even be playing out in real time as we speak. To approach this question, we first need to understand what it takes to be a superpower. The term superpower was first applied after the fallout of World War II and collectively determined that the British Empire, the United States, and the Soviet Union were the top dogs of the modern era. Coined to describe a state that had a dominant economic, technological and cultural position which was characterised by its extensive ability to exert influence on a global scale. Plus, you know, a huge military. Essentially, it's a Civ 5 win condition. Please don't nuke me Gandhi. After 1956 and the Suez Canal crisis, Old Blighty had pretty much lost its superpowers and faded quicker than Alan Quatermain's will to live. Again, after the Cold War and everything that came with that, the Soviet Union dissolved and in 1991, the United States of America remained as the only nation that could maintain the mantle of superpower. But, you know, now there's China, Germany and stuff. So let's imagine this whole time Mexico, the arguable underdog of North America, had been biding its time, laying in wait to reveal to the world its true might an interesting position to be in. Mexico has an extensively rich and vibrant culture and has been populated in some form or another for over 13,000 years. After being colonized by the Spanish in the 16th century, Mexico began walking the path to a federal republic and set out the blueprint to an innovative, independent society under the Mexican constitution of 1917. Economically speaking, Mexico has the 15th largest nominal GDP in the world and the 11th largest by purchasing power. They're up there with Russia, Canada, India and Brazil and if their young fresh economy continues to grow at its current rate it wouldn't be absurd to imagine Mexico rising up as an economic powerhouse. Even after the 2008 recession, Mexico's economy grew an average of 3.32% per year between 2010 and 2014. Mexico's economic success is mainly down to one thing, oil, and they're the seventh biggest producer in the world. In 2009, a petroleum consultancy giant estimated that a particular field in Mexico had an estimated 139 billion barrels of oil in place. That's huge, and if Mexico could tap into that potential, then we're quickly see them rise up the ranks of the GDP. And with a rise in domestic economic dominance comes the potential for trade. NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. Mexico constitutes 80% of its exports to the USA, which makes up about a quarter of Mexico's economy. Most of this is made up with automotive manufacturing, and the US has recently shifted its imports away from China and towards their southern neighbors. Things are looking pretty cushy for Mexico. There's one major problem though, and that's the world's perception of Mexico and the image of the country being riddled with drug dealers and criminals. But that's kind of like viewing the US during the 1920s in Chicago or Atlantic City, and there's a bunch of Al Capones and Nucky Johnsons running around amok. Every country has a severe issue with crime, and unless I'm mistaken, there are currently zero crimeless nations. Even countries at a similar GDP to Mexico, like Italy, Spain, and even the US UK struggle to deal with a level of organized crime. There's no denying that there are cartels that have an active presence in Mexican society, it's fact, and they're pretty damn scary. But historically, we can take a look at another superpower who had risen up surrounded by organized crime, Russia. After the Bolsheviks and the storming of the Winter Palace in 1917, the Russian state began a long relationship with organized crime and communism, Vorovskoy Mir, the thieves world. Even now, Putin's Russia appears to be an economically prosperous place for politicians and oligarchs alike. So who's to say that Mexico wouldn't take a similar path? Maybe it wouldn't be a hindrance, but a boon, and give them the economic and cultural boom needed to step out onto the world stage. And then things would quickly come crashing down, and we'd have one giant problem. 
two superpowers on the same continent. Which really is what this whole video has been leading up to because if Mexico powered up and checked the required boxes needed for superpowerdom, the majority of which would come from a dominant economy, then the USA would have a pretty severe problem. You see, so far in modern history, there hasn't yet been two superpowers that have existed on the same continent. I mean, technically Britain and Russia brushed shoulders briefly, but that was short-lived and the majority of the modern era saw America and Russia at opposite ends of the seesaw. It played out in real time through the Cold War, with spies, espionage, missile crises and posturing on either ends of the planet. There was an entire other continent between the two, you know, minus Alaska. But when you bring it right next door, there'd be imminent war. That's if it even got to that point, without the US engineering some kind of trade war, kind of like what we're seeing with Trump's dangerous game with China at the moment. More than likely, without some kind of diplomatic union, which let's face it, is pretty unlikely with the US. We'd see a conflict that would likely result in World War III. Who knows, maybe Mexico would win and we'd see the green, red and white flag rolling across the Americas. Or, even better, they just skip the war entirely, establish a kick-ass space program and we can finally colonize our solar system together forever. Yeah. That sounds much better. So there we have it guys, the sort of answer to what if Mexico becomes a superpower. Let us know whether you agree with our conclusion in the comment box down below. Also make sure to hit that playlist on your screen if you want to continue your questioning binge. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up if you did. You've been watching Life's Biggest Questions, my name's Jack Finch and remember there's no such thing as a stupid question. Take it easy.